All right, welcome back to the midday Q&A. I'm your host, the Duck Man. <laughs> Trying a little something different today, recording from the uh, sun visor right here in the Fastback. I haven't had this car out in a while, and I'm actually going to drive it out tonight to the Volkswagen meeting. Once a month, the club gets together, and we talk about club events and things coming up and that kind of stuff. It's not tax session. Tax session doesn't come up until the beginning of the month. So we won't have one of those again until February. But a little shortage of things going on today. Wanted to do some tech videos, but couldn't. Unfortunately, it's been like raining on and off and uh, it's really been driving me nuts. It's just the rain comes and goes. In fact, no sooner I pulled the fastback out, it started to rain and then it stopped again. Hey, I don't know what the hell that was about. Somebody yelling, probably because I'm driving a Volkswagen. But I figured, like I said, I'd do a little bit something different here and shoot shoot from the, uh, the fastback. You should be able to see me in the rear view mirror over here. I don't know how badly the camera is bouncing around. I do have a gimbal for it, but uh, the gimbal's kind of big and heavy for the sun visor, so I don't think I want to hook that up that way. Well, anyways, uh, I wanted to get some tech stuff, but it hasn't really been possible. I ordered some tools to try to get some things done. You know, the carburetors in the uh, 1956 Volkswagen Beetle, Eleanor, uh, unfortunately, well, single carburetor now at this point, just one, um, has too small of a jet in it, so I ordered some parts this week for it. I wanted to change the oil fill nozzle, so I ordered some tools. There's a tool, just one of the tools. Um, I've got some more stuff on the way for it, too. So we're probably going to record a tech video uh, starting maybe tomorrow if the weather clears up a little bit, or Saturday if it doesn't rain, because once again, rain is in the forecast on Saturday. And rain keeps falling on my days off, and I'm really not happy about that at all because it's totally ruining my YouTube text, tech video stuff. I mean, it's been doing it consistently for like a month, and it only rains on my days off, and it's becoming incredibly frustrating. Well, anyways, Fastback is running quite well. Just before I started the video, I actually went and looked over the carburetors and made sure everything was still in sync, and it still seems to be. Things are running really good right now. The car warmed up nice and quickly. The good battery that we just installed is doing what it's supposed to do also. So the car is uh, the car is quite happy. And no complaints for me and no complaints for Ruby. Ruby is the 68 Fastback, by the way. That's what I'm inside of right now. Well, anyways, uh, before we get to the rest of this video, I'm going to ask you to please likey, licky, likey. You know, please pluck that little dingle belly next to the subscribe button after you've hit that subscribe button. So that way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out my Facebook group page, Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. And also, if you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll be right back after we roll that intro. and we're back as I said my tech videos this week are gonna be a little bit slow well second half of the week I actually did some pretty good stuff earlier in the week uh, I got a, a good um, 30 minute plus video of me setting up Eleanor's carburetor and got that thing running okay a lot better than it was with the dualies anyway the uh, single carburetor I think is gonna work out just fine it does need some bigger jets a lot of people have suggested that you know the timing is off but it's not the timing you guys saw me set it. And some people say, well, you can't set the timing of a 009 distributor statically. Well, I did, and yes, you can. And even if the timing was off, I mean, unless it's off, like really stupid off, the engine should still rev up just fine. It's, it's not a problem with the timing. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate that. When I get the thing jetted correctly, I'm gonna deliberately mess up the timing on this, this, <laughs> this engine, just to prove to you guys that I can rev it up even when the timing is way off. And yes, it's very, very possible to do that. I learned that here on the Fastback. I actually had an improper setting on my timing on when I set the maximum timing on it. And for some reason it was like at 42 and it should be like around 32. So anyway, too much pre-ignition actually causes um, a little bit of overheating. And I was having that issue. I got off the interstate, and this is like a year ago, a year and a half ago. I got off the interstate and when I was rolling off the interstate and I pushed that clutch in, 
soon as I was downshifted to a lower gear, the oil light came on. And only for a second it started to flicker. So I, I very quickly rolled off the side of the road and uh, checked the oil level. The oil level's fine, but everything in the engine compartment seemed unusually hot. So yeah, that was the beginnings of an overheating situation right there where the oil was just getting way too hot. Of course, running down the interstate, you know, semi wide open at 70 plus miles an hour in an old Volkswagen is it's going to heat up the oil anyway but with your ignition turned up too too far in advance it's going to cause it to overheat and that's exactly what happened sure ran good though <laughs> a little bit of extra a little bit of extra timing a little advance i should say actually made the engine run quite well and but the side effect is that uh it does overheat so anyways uh, i got it set correctly and the car has been fine since then as far as that overheating issue was concerned running very very well I will be taking her to the uh, tech meeting tonight or not tech meeting the club meeting got a pedestrian here want to make sure she can walk there we go I was kind of in the crosswalk yeah, yeah, let's see here we should be good I think so yes sir Some people have said, can I take the glass pack exhaust that's on Eleanor's engine, which is the same one here that's on Ruby, by the way, and uh, go ahead and install it onto Eleanor's upgraded engine in the future? And the answer is yes, maybe, depending upon how far I upgrade the engine. If I build the engine that I want to build with some very high flowing heads and large, large pistons and a long stroke, it's going to probably require a bit of an upgrade. So I'm gonna have to get a bigger exhaust over that. And uh, heater J-tubes aren't, well, I should say, it's not going to be running preheater, crap, I can't get the words out. It's not going to be running heater boxes anyway, and the reason for that is, is because uh, there really aren't any good heater boxes for large diameter pipes, plus I had a problem with the clearance issue of the Kaffir struts that are in the back there. The J-tubes are actually getting in the way. Uh, I should say the Kaffir struts were getting in the way of the J-tubes and even worse in the way of the heater box. Now I can modify the heater boxes. There's a lot of things that I can do in there, but I don't want to. What I'll probably wind up doing, as I mentioned in the video before, is I'll probably set up the oil cooler somewhere in the cabin with a fan blowing through it. As I live in Florida, you don't need like full-on heat. You know, it, it doesn't go below zero. Hell, it barely goes below freezing most of the time. But it's nice to have a little bit of heat once in a while. And I think to have it blowing off of the oil cooler in the engine, in the cabin, the passenger compartment, will actually be just enough heat to make it tolerable in the winter time, which really isn't all that bad at all. But I'll tell you one thing: the heaters here in the fastback, woo, these things work good. I get about 190 degrees coming out of the dashboard. And some people have always said, you know, how do you get your heat working so good on an air-cooled Volkswagen? Those things always suck. No, they don't suck. They just have to be set up properly. You gotta make sure you have all the right tubings. All the little tubing is clamped, that there's no air leaks. And the big critical one is your heater channels, which run along the sides of the car underneath those doors. If your heater channels are rotted out, chances are your hot air is escaping right there. And you're not gonna get a whole lot of heat up front. And I've experienced those problems before on Beetles and such, and I've always managed to fix them, and they work quite well in the end. But this car has good heater channels, the tubes in the back that connect to the heater box, I fixed them all. I connected new tubes to the fan, the fan shroud. One of the reasons for that is because when I changed off the stock header, I had to change out all the piping that goes to that anyway, so nothing really worked properly. Now it does, and I gotta say, it actually works quite properly. It's really nice. And the heat in here is hotter than hell. In the winter time, when it's, it has been below freezing a couple times that I have driven this car, and I pull that heat on, uh, after only about five or 10 minutes of running it, I turn it right back off and the car just stays hot. I mean, it is just hot, hot. And if I'm wearing a jacket or a sweater or something, it's gotta come off. In fact, sometimes they even crack open the, uh, the <laughs> vent window on the side just to give me a little more air. <laughs> but yeah, Eleanor is probably not gonna be running any, any uh, heater boxes. Like I said, I may change that. My, I might change my mind on that in the future. I may go ahead and uh, cut up some heater boxes and make them fit, but I don't think that I want to. But anyway, the high-performance engine won't be working with the, the header that I have on there now. The header is probably going to be too small. And um, doesn't mean the header won't be good for something else, though. Or the, the entire engine, which I believe is a 1600. 
as they're certain that that could be used somewhere else. Hell, maybe it'll be the temporary engine that goes in the bus until the bus gets together. The bus actually has another engine, which I almost forgot about. Um, I was told that that engine is a stroker engine, and that bus was actually raced at some point by a couple owners ago who was kind of a bit of a maniac. Apparently the, the bus had some really nice red and white paint on it, and somebody went and took rattle cans of black and just started spraying over it and just really, really ruined what was a good bus. And of course my friend Mary bought it. She bought it out of a, a scrap yard locally and brought it home and uh, never chose to pursue the paperwork in getting a title for it. So I'm going to have a little bit of a paperwork nightmare with that thing. But uh, nonetheless, I've got the bus and I've got an engine that came with it, which might be a stroker. It turns over freely. I could actually turn it over by grabbing the, uh, the belt. It didn't feel stuck or anything. So I don't know who built the engine, but uh, I, I might trust that one. But if it's a stroker and I keep getting told that it's a high performance engine, I may just go ahead and pull the head off and actually take some measurements on it to see how well that thing runs. And who knows, maybe that'll be the engine that temporarily goes into Eleanor. Now, of course, I'm talking out my ass, we'll see. But there's going to be about, about a year, let's just say a year from today until I get Eleanor's body back from paint. And once the body is back from paint, it, at that point, I'm gonna consider the car as close to done as it's gonna be. And essentially, it's just put everything together on that body. Put everything together on the body, the chassis, throw the engine in it, get the electrical finished up, wrap it up, put a pin in it, the car is ready to drive. So it's about a year from today. So during that time, somewhere in that time, whenever... Crap. Couldn't find the gears. Whenever Earl gets it and paints it, um, I'm going to be stuck with nothing to do. I mean, there's a little work I can do on, on the pan. It's still going to need... Um, an electric adjustable beam, which I've been trying to plan out and a few other little things. But, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm going to need something to work on during that time to not only keep me busy, but for you guys to watch videos of. And that's of course going to be my red and white split window bus. Anyway, I'm a little excited about working on that project, too. It's not going to be as perfect or as beautiful as, as Eleanor is planned to be. This, uh, this bus is going to be a little bit more of a, of a workhorse. I'm actually going to use it for things. You know, I am going to use it to go to the hardware store. I am going to use it for going to visit my customers' locations to work on their computers. It's going to be turned into a little mini workshop on the inside. So that way I've got a facility for, for keeping tools in and stuff when I go on site to go work for something. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's what it was designed for. A work vehicle, you know, it's a panel band. And I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm not gonna overdo it. You know, I'm not gonna put paint on there that's excessively fancy or expensive. I'm not gonna put it through so much extensive body work. I am gonna fix the rust on it though. All the rust that's on the body and the chassis, I'm gonna cut it all out and do what I did with Eleanor, but not to the same extent as Eleanor. Eleanor I put together from pieces. I mean, there was nothing left. But this bus is actually not too bad, too bad a shape as far as comparison to Eleanor. Actually, the car is damn near mint compared to what Eleanor's condition was when I got her. <laughs> oh, a couple people have also asked, hey, wait a minute, man, why do you get so annoyed at our comments? You know, I don't get annoyed at your comments. Really, I don't. I do get annoyed when somebody calls me stupid, however, or when somebody assumes that I'm ignorant. You know, I have thought of a lot of things, and I will accept your suggestions, but there are times that people just say things that are just very negative. And as I said it before, and I said I was only going to say it once, but here's the second time I'm going to say it. There's tools for dealing with people that do that. One button's called delete, and the other button's called block. And I've exercised that a lot in the past few weeks, and uh, since I first mentioned it, I haven't had a whole lot of problems. I got rid of the troublemakers, and I guess you could say I kind of skimmed the cream, shaving those people off the top that were causing me the issues, and they're no longer problems anymore. And I discovered that... Uh, even though you may be blocked from comments, your comments will still appear, but nobody sees them but you. So you don't even know that I've blocked you. <laughs> I guess that's Google's new passive-aggressive way of allowing people to add their own comments even though you've been blocked. To stop people from fighting. Frankly, I don't really give a shit. So anyways, uh, that was a pretty good little adventure making a loop around town here. Um, not much of a Q&A today. Like I said, it's, it's the best that I could do with what I got. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to leave this car out 
before this uh, club meeting tonight, I can almost guarantee it's going to get rained on. I can almost guarantee it. It's not even in the forecast for today, but today is just, it's been wet. And if you look at the radar, there's rain all around us. And it's just not specifically here, but it still happened anyway. And uh, I'm waiting for more tools and shit to come in for Eleanor, so that way I can work on her this weekend. We'll just see what happens with that, so stay tuned, you guys. I really do appreciate that you're watching. I always appreciate that you guys click the Licky Likey button and that you leave a comment. I mean, constructive criticism is a good thing. If you really have something that's going to help me, I'll accept it, absolutely. And I really do appreciate those comments, and sometimes I even use them. So I think that's it for today, so I really do appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching so much, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly you see down there next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. And if you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.